Hi, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, just a tiny bit. Let, let me give everybody a bit of background on why this is happening. So um, earlier this year, uh, I was at the Vegas Cosmetic Surgery lecturing and uh, um, stayed around for probably about 60 of the other talks. Um, and, uh, you know, honestly, I've been to so many of these meetings, it's difficult um, to impress me anymore. But Alexis, Alexis did exactly that. Um, in a short presentation in 20 minutes, she delivered, I think, um, more value, more insight into um, branding and business development than I think I had experienced from any of the other presenters. And I, I actually chased Alexis down the halls um, uh, of the resort to get her card uh, so that I can invite her to not only present today, but she's, I'm excited, uh, agreed to join us at our big practice development symposium in just a, a couple of months. Um, you know, I learned later really more about how and where that insight came from on the stage. You know, she started her career um, back with Steiner Transocean, which is one of the world's largest spa companies, um, you know, followed that with experience with Carnival Cruise Lines. Um, she's worked all over the world, opening some amazing spa concepts in countries like Singapore and across Asia. Um, you know, she revamped the premier destination spa in Italy before she ultimately headed to Spain to consult with Marriott International. You know, back in 2000, she came back to the States, um, opening one of the first medical spas in the country. And you know, her client list is incredibly diverse, ranging from Deepak Chopra to Starwood and, and Marriott Hotels. You know, and I think it's, it, it's that breadth of experience that I'm hoping she can bring to you today as you think about how and where you bring both branding and the design of really unique experiences to each of your patients. So. Um, you're not here to, to hear me, you're here to hear Alexis. So Alexis, um, thank you again for agreeing to join us and, and please uh, take it away. Okay, thanks Ryan, that was, that was a really good intro. <laughs> you made me sound great. Um, hi everybody, thank you for joining today. Uh, I'm Alexis, I am the owner of Lexi Design and we are a very small boutique consulting branding and marketing firm that really specializes in medical spas, day spas, um, and most recently, really a wellness medispa merge. Uh, I have been in business for about 18 years and have had my hand in the development of hundreds of spas worldwide. And uh, I'm based out of New York City, uh, which means a couple things. One, it means I speak very, very fast, so please forgive me in advance. And the other is that I just want to tell everybody that I am a professional consultant. I'm usually the girl behind the scenes, so I am not as articulate or great speaker as Ryan is. Um, but the content is amazing, so if you can just bear with me as I get through it, I promise to uh, give you some really great insight today on how to build a really powerful brand. Um, so let's get my face off of, yeah, oh, so much better. Hey, Alexa. Okay, yes. Can I ask one favor of you before you get started? Sure. I'm noticing on my screen that it's not allowing me to click the start recording button, and I'd hate to lose the bulk of your presentation. On sure. your control panel in the upper right, if that little red start recording button is an option for you, do me a favor and go ahead and just click that. And, then, uh, uh, and if I not, don't worry. Stop showing. I don't think I have that. Then don't, then don't you yeah. worry about it at all and please take it away. If it's not recording, I'm happy, I'm happy to email this presentation to everybody afterwards. I don't know if that helps. Um, yeah, no, anyway. Okay, we'll work about that. We'll work that out. Okay, so today's webinar is called the Seven Steps to Building a Powerful Brand, and um, really my goal today is to provide you provide you with some really just tangible, usable like nuggets of information that you can leave with and do to your own brand to enhance it, to attract really at the end of the day to attract more uh, loyal patients or customers. So um, let's get started. I will begin with. Uh, just, I like to give sort of an overview of the next 50 minutes. So first of all, I'm just gonna review the basic terms of branding. Um, don't, not to insult you, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. I'm gonna use them 100 times, so I wanna make sure you understand what I'm saying. And then I'll talk you through brand touch points, which might be a new term for some of you. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about what the new, like today's consumer is looking for from you and from their brands, which is very different from five years ago and continually evolving. Uh, and then I'll get to the real guts of the lecture, which is our sort of secret sauce or our methodology, which is our seven C's of branding. And then just show you some examples of people who are doing a really good job with it. And then I'll open up the floor uh, for some Q&As, if that works for everybody. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get on the same page here. Okay, so let me talk you through three things that I'm gonna discuss. 
brand, what is a brand, what, is, what are brand touch points, and uh, what is branding? Um, okay, so a brand is the words, images, thoughts, and feelings that come to mind when somebody thinks about you, or they interact with you, or your business in some way. And, uh, and this is so different than what it once was. When we used to think about a brand, we would say like, we would think really specifically that it was a logo. And we would be like, oh, I love your brand. It's, you know, it's purple and has a flower in it, or it's, you know, a swoop, a Nike swoop. Like we would always think it was really specific to just the logo itself. Now we realize that the brand is like so much more than a logo. It's really every experience that someone has with pretty much any part of your business that's going to affect their um, opinion of you. So I, I like to say that your brand is like real estate in somebody's like heart and mind. It's like what they think of you. And um, there's this little guy named Jeff Bezos, you might have heard of him. And he succinctly says this so well. He says, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And basically, you have to look at your brand as what somebody else's opinion is of you. Um, so let's talk about what these sort of experiences mean. Um, anytime someone comes into contact with a part of your business, it's considered an experience and it affects their opinion. And these are your brand touch points. So if you think about each of your brand touch points, or if you think about a client or new client or potential new patient that's coming to see you, first they're going to Google you, maybe they're going to Google Botox, and then your ad is going to come up. And then they're going to go to your website. Does it represent you? When they land on your homepage, does it feel like you? And then they move on to possibly your Instagram page because they're, they're going to want to see if you're alive and fresh and moving and, and, and up to date and modern. And then they're going to call you because they're interested and they're going to speak to your front desk. And then they're going to come in and check in at the front desk. And then they're going to sit in your waiting room and they're going to look at your decor and you're going to see what's on your table and they're going to have a drink of your water. And then they're going to finally meet you. And so all of these are basically brand touch points. They're experiences that people have had that have helped them evolve their opinion of your brand. Um, and all of these, most importantly, are things that happen before they've actually even gotten into the room or into the treatment room or the operating room, or the consult room, and actually meet you. So branding is what you do to, to your brand touch points to influence words, images, experiences, thoughts, feelings, all of those things to help formulate people's opinions of you. So basically, our goal is, or your goal should be to manipulate, which is a terrible word, but manipulate people's opinions of you by applying your message to their, to your brand touch points. And so what I, I like to say is each doctor, each practice, each med medical spa business is special. They have their own style, they have their own personality, philosophy, their method, methods. And like all of these little things, these are your message, your message and why you're successful. So good branding is sort of uncovering exactly what your message is and then layering it over each of your brand touch points so that your clients, most importantly, your, your potential clients, like they understand who you are. They see your website, they get you. Um, and they want to become uh, your patient. Um, one, I, I, I was in Vegas and heard Ryan speak, and one of the things he said was like, well, he loves when people come in and say, oh, I feel like I already know you. And that really resonated with me because that really is the goal. We are trying to get you and your personality to the forefront of your marketing and branding so that people understand you before they even get through the doors and meet you. Um, okay, so I killed that one. So good, got that one. So moving on. Um, what do today's consumers want? Uh, all right, I'm just going to read this because it's my kind of fam favorite sentence of the, of the lecture, which is, consumers are seeking brands that humanize themselves, connect and build relationships, provide valuable content, and communicate in a real and thoughtful way. And I always say, like, look at the words that we're using here, humanize, relationships, thoughtful, these are just not words that we used to like use in marketing even a few years ago. And, and it's because today's consumers are like super tired of corporate jargon, generic messaging, stock imagery. They are looking for more authenticity from, from their brands. And uh, 
and I never like to reference really the big brands, but I, I, I will just sort of prove my point now. Um, think of brands like Budweiser or AT&T or, um, sorry, let me get a little water, or Dove Soap, these like really huge brands. Um, and, and, and let's just take Budweiser as an example. You know, it's Super Bowl Sunday. It's like literally the highest testosterone day of the year. Budweiser has a commercial about a puppy and a horse. And uh, they grew up together in like a little stable um, and they're best friends. And then the horse has to go off and, and do horse things, whatever, horse things. But he gets, I'm, I'm a city girl, sorry. So he goes off, he gets purchased. And then he comes back with a horse parade because he's a Clydesdale. And the puppy somehow jumps out of this stable and runs to the parade. And then the commercial ends with the two of them touching their noses and everybody's like welling up inside. And at the end of the day, this is literally could never happen. And it's about a can of beer, but it's emotionally connecting with us and it's creating emotion. Or uh, think about something like um, AT&T, for example. Every phone commercial has been de designed to make you cry. And I love the one where the father is a curmudgeon and he hates this new world and new technology and he doesn't want to get a phone, um, but his daughter only texts messages and then she goes off to college and then he has to break down and get a phone and text her because it's the only way they can get connected. And, you know, again, daddy daughter love, it'll pull at your heartstrings. And the whole commercial is designed to really sort of touch you and, 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 make, and make you feel an emotion. Or um, another one is Dove Soap, who I love. If you go onto their website, it's literally like a masterclass in branding and marketing. P push aside the fact that whether the soap smells like baby powder or cucumber, like that doesn't matter. Look at everything that they stand for, every ad that they do, all the copy that they use, the charities they're involved with. It's women supporting women, women embracing their curves, women embracing not wearing so much makeup and their natural beauty. They have a whole thing about building self-esteem for young girls. The whole brand, at the end of the day, it's a bar of soap, but their goal is for you when you walk down the aisle at the Stop and Shop or you know the Piggly Wiggly, whatever, you're going to see the Dove soap and it's going to make you feel sort of warm and fuzzy and you're going to want to pull this um, soap off the shelf and buy their soap. Um, I always think about this uh, viral video that Dove soap did and I don't know if I'm going to explain it well, but there's like two people in a waiting room. There are two women and the one woman goes in and it's with a sketch artist and the sketch artist says, describe yourself and he can't see her and he paints a picture of her. And then she leaves and sits in the waiting room and the other woman comes in and they say to the other woman, um, describe the woman you just saw. And then at the end, they hold up the pictures and the woman who described herself made her like teeth crooked and her wrinkles so bad and no hair and made herself look so awful. And then the woman who described her was like, oh, she had beautiful hair, she had bright blue eyes, she had a friendly smile. And so the whole thing is designed just to make you feel, feel something. And so the point is not that you should all start creating ads that make people cry. That is, that's not it. But these brands, and this is sort of the whole point of the webinar, is that these brands are sent, spending millions and millions of dollars to emotionally connect with their clients or their potential clients. They're looking to build this intimate connection with the consumer. They are humanizing themselves. They are looking to build relationships. They are communicating in a thoughtful way. And the point of the webinar is that these guys are spending millions and millions of dollars to create this intimacy that you guys on the webinar as small business owners or practice managers or whatever it is, you guys already have this intimate relationship. This, your greatest marketing tool is the intimate relationship that you have with your clients. You know exactly what they want, what your clients respond to, what they're looking for, how to make them happy. You have the ability to speak direct to your clients and change things immediately if they're not responding or if someone's unhappy, you can fix things immediately. Um, and the irony of the entire point of this is that these brands are spending all of this money to get this intimate relationship that you so easily have. And you guys have not millions and millions of dollars on this or little to no money to spend on it. And you guys are creating ads like this. And so here is like one of our pet, pet peeves and hopefully what we try to teach you today of, of what not to do. This is devoid of all person, personality, any humanization, any sort of thoughtfulness. And we're all guilty of this and we all kind of just need something quickly and throw something out the door. But a type of ad like this 
it lacks any type of intimacy and any way to really connect emotionally with, with what the, your consumer is looking for today. So the guts of the lecture is the seven C's, and this is our sort of secret sauce or our way that we apply each of these C's to each of our clients' brands to ensure that they are creating an intimate relationship with not just their existing clients, but their new clients through their websites and their marketing and their branding and their logo and everything, the interior design and everything feels very consistent, connected, synergistic, and, and reflects exactly who they are. Okay, Ryan, how am I doing? You're doing a great job. And I, I cringed fast. a little bit on the inside <laughs> and smiled simultaneously because I think I've seen some variant on the ad, the example that you just showed. <laughs> You know what? We're literally um, all two hundred times, including about forty-five minutes ago before this this webinar. So oh, painful. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. It's a, so it's, it's a painful reality, and I I think it's something that we see when when practices who are not mindful of the image they're projecting, um, and with team members who really aren't familiar with the importance of branding, who are cobbling quickly together, um, you know, elements like this, because um, you know, fast and done sometimes is it seems easier. Um, than thoughtful and, and brand aligned. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, listen, it's not, we are all guilty. It's not always possible. You know, sometimes it's got to go out quickly and this is what we do, but there are ways to, to fix this. And that's hopefully what I'm going to talk through today. So my first C is called clarity and, and really this is clarity of purpose. I think it's imperative to be crystal clear about who you are and what you do. If you, if you aren't crystal clear to about these, you can't expect your client to be clear, and then more importantly, or your patient, and then more importantly, you can't expect them to buy from you. Um, and these days, to human your, humanize yourself and, and to deliver authentic content and be thoughtful, you don't just need to say like who you are and what you do, but you also need to say why you do it. So let me just show you a couple of examples of that. So here are just two sort of easy, um, easy examples, and, and these were pretty easy fixes and obvious, but I, it makes my point. So if you look at the top here, here's somebody called the Inspiration Day Spa. Um, you know, name is blah, but whatever, I can't do anything about that. Logo is clip art from the 90s, painful, but moving on from that. The name is Inspiration Day Spa, and her tagline is Mind, Body, Soul, and then her logo is a drip of water. And so everything about this re reads dated massage place. Now, the, the, the strange thing here is that this woman specialized in skincare. She had all these interesting techniques. She was from um, uh, mid the Middle East. She had all of these interesting techniques that she did. She was doing some high-end services. She had a lot of technology. And so she wasn't even saying exactly who she was or what she did. And, on, and, and a step further was that people used to call her three or four times a day and say, uh, I'd like to book a massage. And she would be so frustrated because she was like, why don't they read the menu? There's no massage on the menu. I don't, should I just start offering massage? Because so many people call me about it. And, and, and the problem wasn't so much that, that, that so many people were calling. Like, you don't change your, your entire sort of menu on the fact that people are calling. You've got to look at the message that you're delivering. You're basically telling people you're a day spa and that it's about mind, body, and soul. So of course they're going to call you about massage. So we basically took it back. I mean, it needed such a refresh. We, we changed the name slightly, keeping the old name Inspiration, moved it to Inspiration Beauty, and then called it Innovative Skincare Clinic, where it was all about in, innovative skincare solutions. And so like that, this, the call stopped. And so by just saying exactly who you are and what you do, you're gonna start getting the calls that you want. And I know that sounds super obvious, but let's look at one that's not as obvious. Um, here's, and I'm sorry if I'm calling you out and you're on the phone, but here is Valley Plastic Surgery. Their, um, their tagline is surgical and non-surgical procedures. And so what does that mean to the layman? I mean, is surgical, breast augmentation? Is it a liver transplant? Is it a lobotomy? Like, what does it mean? And non-surgical, what does that mean? Is that Botox or is it a colonoscopy? Like, you're not speaking to anybody. You don't say anything with this. 
So what we did was moved it over, pulled the main person out of it, which was Jennifer Levine, and then we changed her tag to cosmetic surgery and beauty procedures. Really now she's, we've made it more feminine. We've said who she is. We're spotlighting her now as a, as a leader in the industry. And then we're building up her name so that she, with her tagline so that she's connecting with people that, that understand exactly who she is and what she does. Again, it sounds obvious because these are obvious examples. But I can tell you half the time I go on to people's websites and I'll read the name and then it doesn't make any sense or the logo doesn't make, make any sense or there's no supporting copy that makes sense. These three things, your, your logo and your name and this tagline and the supporting copy that surrounds it all has to, to be delivering the same message, which is who you are and what you do. Okay, let me just move on to my, how come I'm stuck? Um, that's weird. Okay, sorry about that. Um, and then let me talk a little bit about um, your why. So the, I don't know if you've ever read the book, Start With Why. It's a great book by um, Simon Sinek. And he's dreamy and delicious and he's, the book is so smart. But he basically says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And so I think this is so unbelievably important. This goes along exactly with what we're saying. Consumers are looking for authenticity. They're looking for passion. They're looking for you to love what you do. They want to understand the reason that you get up in the morning and why you come and why you love, you know, being at the office all day. Um, they want to to go to somebody who's who their job turns them on. Basically, here's an example of a client um, that we did in in um, San Francisco. Her name's Cheryl Pierce. She owns a med spa and it's called Skinworks. And and basically, her whole concept is is making inspiring confidence and joy through better skin. And so it's not just you know we make you look younger, we make you feel better. She wants to she wants to inspire confidence. Her story is that she wasn't confident when she was younger. She had bad skin. She got better skin, and she came out of her shell. And so the 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 whole storyline behind her supporting copy and her branding and her all of her social media um, posts aren't just about like, hey, we do Botox. It's more like, hey, we build confidence. We're gonna help you make you feel better. We're gonna make you feel more confident to go get that job. We're gonna make you feel more confident to um, go find love. We're gonna make you more confident. You can do whatever you set your mind to. So the whole concept is less about really specific, we do Botox lasers and service, this service and that service. It's everything we do here is all about helping you feel better about yourself and that confidence is part of her sort of brand story. So her why is weaved into her brand story. Does that make sense? I'm not sure I got there. Um, okay, so once you know your, um, your who and your what and your why, um, you wanna start talking about your, your culture. And this is a, always a little tricky to explain. So most of you, get up against your competition are selling basically the same thing over and over again. So if you are a derm and you're selling dermatological services and you're probably doing laser facials and Botox, if you are a dentist, you're selling, you know, against the other dentists, you're selling the same services. So the difference between you and your competition is, is you and your unique like way of thinking. Um, so I always like to figure out how to, to spotlight or how to create your own culture by spotlighting what is your philosophy, what is your style, what is your method, your personality. All of these create sort of a, a culture in your in your space. You're not trying to do exactly what everybody else does. You want to create your own uh, little world. And I like equate it to something like when you go away on vacation. Like I went to Italy three three weeks ago. And we were in Siena for three days. And I, every every morning I get up in my normal life and I literally eat yogurt, granola, and fruit every single day. And when I'm there, we got up in the morning and on the corner, we went, I, we went and we had a coffee, a little coffee and like a little ham and cheese sandwich. And every day I would do that. I broke free from my own culture. This was their culture. And I, I molded myself to it. I embraced it. I liked it. I loved it. And so you have to look at yourself as like a little Italy in a sense. People are going to come in and they have to adapt to your culture. So don't, so highlight the things that you do different and the things that are you say different and the things that you, your personality, these are the most important things that you need to embrace. So embrace your unis and build a culture 
around your units. And so the best way for me to do this is kind of show you some examples of the culture. But um, so here's like some big guys like Dry Bar, Soul Cycle, Skin Laundry. These should all sort of look familiar to you. Um, dry Bar was the first to market with a blow dry bar. They were the first ones to think of you don't get cuts here, there's no colors, you're just coming in to get a, a blowout. And when you come in, so you, first of all, they had the first to really do online booking where you had to buy your service ahead of time. So you literally online booked your service, bought your service, and if you didn't show up, you, 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 really, you lost your service. The second thing is when you came in, you didn't tell them, oh, I want this or I want that. They would show you a book. Here are the five hairstyles you can have. Which one do you want? And you would pick your, their hairstyle. And so they created this relatively rigid sort of thing. But meanwhile, they're on location 100, a number like 99 or 100 at this point. So it seems to be working. Um, but they created their own culture. They created their own sort of system that people had to come in and adapt to their system. And the same thing with SoulCycle. When you go into SoulCycle, you have to um, put on a pair of their shoes. So the first time I went to SoulCycle, and for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a spinning class. And again, there's like 100 of these across the country. Um, but you have to wear their shoes. And like, I was literally appalled. The last time I put somebody else's shoes on was like at a bowling, 13th birthday party bowling, uh, you know, birthday party. So I kind of balked at it, but I was not allowed in unless I put their shoes on. So I, this was their system. They created a culture. They created a, a, their own method of doing things. And we had to adapt to doing it. When you go into their spinning classes, the classes are held in the dark. So there's no lights on. This is their way of doing things. You can't say to them like, sorry, I don't like the darkness. Can you turn the light on? They say, no, <laughs> this is our way of doing things. If you don't like it, go down the street. And people obviously liked it. Um, and the same, I wanna talk about skin laundry. If you haven't heard of this, this is a little uh, um, amazing sort of story of a mini spa that uh, came out of San Francisco. It's, it's a woman who does one service with one laser. It's a YAG laser. And all she does is this 15 minute service. And again, you, she has her own system. When you go in, you, you buy online. Again, you have to purchase the service up front. If you miss your appointment, you lose your service. And when you get in there, you have to wash your own face. So you, go, you check in, you go to the waiting room, and there's the sink, you wash your own face, and then you sit down, and then you go sit in the, in the treatment room, and you have a facial, and then you leave. And so, I mean, I could never even have imagined telling my telling clients, yeah, wash your own face in the bathroom and then come in. But this is their culture and what they've um, what they've created, and people adapt to their culture. So those are kind of one-off sort of things. But let's talk about things that are like a little bit more easy to and tangible that you can do now. Here is a spa called Truth and Beauty, and this is located in Long Island. It's a beautiful spa. It's about five thousand square feet, and Prior to coming into any appointment, you need to sit with somebody called the beauty coach. And it's a 45 minute consult. And if you're a first time client, it's just built into the service. You have to come in and do this. And you get the Vizia. And during that Vizia, you have the Vizia, but more importantly, you sit down and you talk to the, the, the beauty coach and she gives you recommendations. And you know everybody has this, she's a sales consultant. And then what she does is she, if you can see to the right here, there's a little bit of pink book called the beauty diary. And so then what she would do was put the results in the beauty diary and you would leave with the beauty diary and she would sell you services. And then you would keep coming back and you would bring your beauty diary and every once in a while you go back in with the beauty coach, she would keep tabs on you maybe after a series of services and then you'd get your Vizia again and then you'd come in and put it, bring your beauty diary, fill it in the next page. It's basically just a photo album, but they created their own system here. First of all, everybody who comes in has got to, got to go through the Vizia. They knew they were going to sell more if they had people sit in the seat. Second of all, they knew where they were going to sell more if they had something tangible at home that reminded people of what their skin looked like. So they made these diaries because it didn't feel like you wanted to throw it away and you wanted to come back and keep filling it, filling it up. And now, now people come with that in their bag and they'll say, I don't know if I'm seeing the beauty coach today. I brought my diary just in case. But the point is, is that they've incorporated this into, into a system. They've created this culture and people adapted to the culture. Um, here's an, and also a simple thing to say, uh, to do, um, here is a client called Nicole Frontera. She, um, she created her sort of signature method by, uh, creating little services that she did mixed 
combined or combined services. At the end of the day, back of house, we know it's just a package, but the way she marketed it and sold it was that she, it's her signature method of lifting your lips. So she, for example, for her lip lifts would be like a little all therapy, a syringe of filler, maybe a little Botox under the nose, and then uh, you leave with an Obagi lip build. And this was a packaged price. So now she's not, uh, when you're saying I wanna do my lips, you know, what's your price versus this price? Her package is just different. She has her own method of doing things. And so at the end of the day, everybody has their own method. It's really just how you sort of present it to make it look like it's your signature style. I love hearing clients say, or patients of Nicole say, oh, I always go to Nicole. She has her own like signature touch. She has her own like little way of doing things. She does, but we're presenting that through her marketing and so that and her branding. And that's what's making people understand that she has her own style of doing things. And everybody has their own style. You just have to figure out how to highlight that better. You know, Alexis, can I pause you on that, that idea? Yes. We have a question coming in from the audience. You know, clearly, as we look in the spa environment where um, we have, you know, multiple smaller price point um, products and treatments that we can combine, using packaging as a, uh, as a sort of a cultural differentiator makes a lot of sense. Do you have experience on where that might be applicable for um, like a single high value surgical procedure, you know, where, um, you know, by its nature, it, it, it could be combined with some support services and other, and, and other treatment aspects or service aspects. But how does that, that concept extend into the high value, value surgical arena, do you think? Yeah, well, there's a couple things you can do. I definitely feel like you should be incorporating sort of, you should be packaging things when you're doing that. There should be a pre-op, a post-op of something that's really going to help um, enhance the entire service in itself. But more importantly, it's not just the fact that they have a method of packaged services. The point is really that we want to talk about, we, we want to express in the branding that he has his own signature way of doing things. It doesn't have to specifically be services. It, it's really just his philosophy. And it's making sure that his philosophy, philosophy is like presented properly. So, yeah. it, so for example, and this is such a basic one, but we love putting a quote when a lot of people do, like we have a lot of nurses who are our clients and they're, they always say the same thing. People come to me because I don't make them look crazy. I, I like them to have a natural look. So just by putting a quote that says, um, you know, my philosophy is that I'm looking to enhance beauty rather than this, or I'm looking, uh, my style is this, that, that is like kind of the same thing. It's basically saying, this is my specialty and how I do it. And speaking to somebody to say, this is how I do something. This is my method. So it doesn't have to be a specific, do you, am I making myself clear? It doesn't have to be sort of yeah, a package of things. It really just has to, it has to be like a philosophy or a way of doing something. And everybody has their own way. It's just saying it to the, the people on your website ahead of time before they come in so they can connect with that. When, when I see something that says a quote, you know, I'm looking to enhance your natural beauty. I want you to look out, look, leave here looking refreshed and not changed. I, I want to meet that person. I don't want to meet somebody who's saying, you know, buy one, get one free filler. Excellent. And um, to Alexis, if you'll allow me just one brief interruption here to remind everybody in the audience, Kathy, thank you for that question. Um, for the rest of you, just as a reminder, on the right-hand side of your screen, you have that questions control panel. Um, be sure to expand that if you have not already. You can toss questions our way throughout the rest of the webinar simply by typing them in in the gray box in the bottom of the screen where it's appropriate. Um, I'll interject with Alexis as we just did. Uh, otherwise, I'll hold them for the end. And Alexis, please uh, take it away. Super. So, um, and then here's another example. So this is Truth and Beauty again. And this is their method. And this is kind of could... Um, speak to what we were just talking about too. Um, basically, they said they have a 5R method to anti-aging and it's relax, refill, reposition, uh, resurface, and maybe rehydrate, I don't remember what it is, I can't see it. Um, anyway, the point is, is that when people come in, they say, oh, we have a 5R approach. So when you first come in, you might do, you might only need two R's, you, but in a year or so, we'll move you up to three R's. So let's start with the resurface and refill. And then I like to, you know, once a year, bring in the third R. Like, it's really almost like just a different language. You're just trying to talk to different to, to diff people differently about having sort of your own methodology of doing something. So they don't just feel like you're, it's a factory, you're a number, you're a number of units and, and a number of syringes. Um, and so these, this, this company, Truth and Beauty, 
we really sort of played up on this this five R approach, and so everything in their marketing would be like, um, "What's your five R approach?" You know, I'm relax and refill, and then you could click on the website and go to their relax, and it would say, "Here's the tool of of transfer transformation to relax. We use Botox, Dysport, and Zeman." And then you could explain, you know, here's what I did. Here's the results after on the Vizia. We did a little GIF here. It's a video of her squeezing her eyebrows and not being able to get it to see. I mean, it's really just showing this, showing people more personality and more of a method or a, a way that you do something and how you express yourself so that people can emotionally connect with you. That's really the, the goal here. Um, and then here's another one. I'm sorry, we just finished this one. So I, I keep highlighting this, but we created four skincare systems and this was super easy. They, they private labeled them. It's not like they, we did anything. We didn't custom manufacture a product. They really just private labeled young pharmaceuticals. And then when people came in to see that beauty coach, you didn't buy one chemical peel. You could buy, you could only buy three chemical peels and, and you had to buy it with a kit. And Obaji loves to do this as well. We basically imitated them, but it's the right system to do because this is part of our operation. Our method is that you can't just come in and get a peel. You're not going to leave and say, meh, it was just okay. It didn't really do anything. It's just like everybody else's peel. If you come in and you do three peels and you do our skincare kit, you're, you're going to see a change on the Vizia and you're going to see a change in the Mira. And so our, their method was not just to create a private label product, which I always recommend because it enhances the brand, but to incorporate it into the operation, into the sale, into the, and, and into their system so that they had the, their own sort of unique culture here, which was a, their method or their culture. Um, okay, good. So moving on to content. So now, now that you, you know your who, what, and why, which is your clarity, and now you have this sort of culture, this is the content that people or your marketing department is now looking for. They now need to pump this out through any means necessary. These are now, now that you have this, these are, assume this as your, your message. And now this message needs to be delivered through your website and your um, social media posts and your blog and your newsletters. And if you're writing in a beauty column and you're, anything you do social media, whether it's tips or uh, videos, um, if you're doing a crea creating an educational video, um, anyway, be, be creative, but all of this content now has to be developed around your who, your what, your why, and your specific methodology or your culture. Um, and I know this is the hardest part. The hardest part is just uh, the actual creation of it, but there are teams out there that can help you. And, he, and here's an example of what we do for, for um, Nicole Frontera, for example. So she is, this is actually her in the picture. So she's super hot. I mean, not everybody looks like this, but she's in every photo. She wears like six inch heels around the office. She works a 10 hour day. She does about 90,000 in uh, injectables on a monthly basis. And she teeters around in those heels. She's all about fashion. She likes everything super sexy. She loves the color hot pink. So everything's got to be speaking like in her language, in her way with imagery. So her blog posts, her newsletters, her social media posts, everything's going out that feels super branded and really about her. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit about conversation. So conversations really, um, you can converse in, in, in branding, you can converse with people in a lot of different ways. The first is like your voice itself, your, the tone of your voice. The second is your photography and your videography. Um, and I wanna sort of show examples of each of these. Um, consumers are looking for realness. They're looking for authenticity. They like you. They come to you because they like you. If you're like a, owning your own practice or you're, you're, you're relative, you know, successful, you're doing something better than the rest of the packers and people are attracted to this. So whatever they're attracted to, you have to sort of put out there more. You know, I said in the beginning, to get to you, to get to really know you, people have to Google you and get through your website and then go through your social media and then get on a phone call and then, and then contact the front desk. And then all of these things happen before they even get to you. So, and then they fall in love with you. If you could have your personality and your language and the way you talk and treat people at the forefront, you're gonna attract the people that you wanna attract. So your vibe sort of like attracts your tribe. And so you wanna be as real and true to yourself as you can through all your branding because you're gonna attract more people that are gonna be loyal customers because they're gonna get you. 
Um, so let's talk about voice and tone. This is always like a funny thing that we see. There's no wrong answer here. The only wrong answer is when it's inconsistent. So you have to look at your personality and say, am I, how do I treat my patients or my clients? Am I super formal? Am I nurturing? Do I hug everybody before they leave? Am I old pals and we're always joking and I go for drinks with them? Um, like, what is it that, that what, how are you with your patients? Because that's the tone that should be reflected all the way through everything you do. If we have, a, we have a Park Ave doctor and he literally wears a bow tie to work every day, they joke around it. They, when he ran the New York Marathon and they put a bow tie around him and he ran the New York Marathon with a bow tie, he is so formal. And so if I ever did a post on his social media that was like a little dirty or like soft and cuddly, people would see a disconnect there. So you really have to have your voice or your tone reflect who you are in the office. Um, Nicole Frontera is like super sexy. Everything's always sassy. If I did a social media post on like a hump day Wednesday with like a little kitten hanging off a tree, she would literally call me immediately and have me rip it down. So you want to make sure that your tone is reflective of who you are. And that's how you write and how your images are and how your videography is through everything that you do. Um, and also like, do you have a catchphrase? Use that or like a philosophy or saying, do you call yourself a nickname? Um, you know, basically this easy, easy. Um, hold on. So are you speaking the same language to your clients? Not only do you want to use your own tone, but you want to, you, you want to make sure that your patient understands you. So we have a lot of clients, we have a lot of doctors who always write in medical jargon and then assume that their patients or patients to be are going to understand what they're saying. And this is sort of a big faux pas for us. Um, if I'm looking at these two websites, you know, when you look, go to Truth and Beauty, you can find your service by, um, by benefit to you. So erase my wrinkles, fade my brown spots, reduce my redness, decrease my dimples, um, and not dimples on your face. Um, these are, this language is like people read it and they're like, I want to erase my wrinkles. Like they're going to emotionally connect with that. When you write, and if you look at the bottom picture here, if you write micro canula technique, no one's, no, what? no one connects with that, even if it's the best technique on the planet. Not everybody knows what the axillus elite is. Now, a lot of people are going to know cool sculpting, and that's great, but you have to remember that you can't just keep technical jargon in your language and your, when you're conversing because everybody doesn't get it. You're trying to speak to them not only from who you are with your tone, but you want to talk to them, speak to them in a language that they understand. And then nicknames, philosophies, catchphrases. Here's a bunch of things that people have done just as examples. Nicole, up in the right-hand corner, calls herself the queen of injectables. Um, uh, we've seen a lot of people call themselves that, but it's super cute. And she puts this all over social media, and people love it. And they say, you know, all hell the queen when they come in and get Botox and fillers from her. Um, Corey is here. Uh, you're in, you're out, you're flawless. That's what she says all the time. She always jokes around, oh my God, you got to come into my spa. It's so quick. You're in, you're out, you're flawless. That's what she says. Put it on the website. That's a thing that people connect with. They know her. They can hear her saying that. Put it with her image. Michelle's a little bit more soft-spoken, professional, formal. You know, she really has more of a philosophy and she's had a deep wish to offer discerning men and women. I mean, this is her personality. So you've got to make sure that your personality speaks because that speaks to who you are and what you want to say. Um, Let's talk a little bit about photography. Photography is another way of conversing with your clients. I tell all of our clients, if there's one thing to spend your money on this year, 2019 coming up, is a solid photo shoot and videography, video shoot. Um, now again, here's Nicole Fontera. I use her because she's super adorable and hot and stuff and her pictures are amazing, but more, more so because we had a really specific thing that we needed to tackle with these photos. When she first opened her spa, she's a nurse practitioner. Her doctor is uh, an overseeing consulting doctor who, who isn't really um, doing any of the services. And when clients or patients would call, they would say, oh, what's the doctor's name? Who is the doctor? And she would get frustrated because she was like, I, I, I'm doing the services. So by taking photographs of her and actually doing the services and then sprinkling these all over the websites, we literally took that question away 
off the, you know, off the call and people could see themselves. They see themselves in the, the chair. They see her doing it. They trust the pictures. You're basically building like this, no like trust factor with them. Um, and, and don't just look at this. There's a lot of different ways to do this. We have a lot of doctors who are, want to stay more in the surgery room um, and they want to push services to their nurses. And so take pictures of nurses and, and build up your nurses. You've got to build them up so that people see them and connect with them emotionally. Otherwise, they're always calling the doctor and the doctor's trying to push them off onto the nurse. You have to almost build the nurse's brand within your brand so that you can alleviate yourself so that you can spend more time in the surgery room and pass the Botox or fillers off to somebody else if that's the goal. There's a lot of reason, there's a lot of things that you can accomplish with photography. Um, and then when you're looking for stock photo, because you can't, the whole website can't be filled of just pictures of yourself. That gets a little creepy. But look for photos that are more lifestyle images. Here are two examples of a type of photography. The one to the left feels more like an Instagram page now. These are lifestyle. They have more personality to them. There's more energy to them. They feel real. There's multinationalities. There's multi-ethnicities. There's multi skin tones. There's, there's people laughing. They're, they're not just these, to the right, these generic stock photos where a woman needs to cover her private parts with a flower. Like if you have that photo, there's, if you need to cover, if you have a photo where you need a flower to cover your something, you have the wrong photo up. So you want to make sure that you've got relatable images or, or, or aspiring images. It is a known fact that women connect with pictures of themselves or people that they relate to in your advertising. So if they can say, oh, my skin's that color, or they can say, oh, you know, she looks friendly and nice. She looks like my friend Jenny. People are going to connect with that. Or she looks happy. I want to be happy. They're going to emotionally connect with that more than the woman who is, is laying down with flower petals laying by her, her face. That's the reality. And videography even takes it to a, a, another level. And there's so many things that you can do with video these days. Um, here's an example of Ellen, Dr. Ellen Marmer. And she is super adorable. She's a derm on the Upper East Side of New York. And she, this is off of her website. And she has just a bunch of, bunch of her services. And she's explaining her services. So this is one way of doing it. And she's, you, you click on the photo and it's almost like she basically just says, hi, you know, I'm Dr. Marmer. You can call me Ellen. So Botox is blah, blah, blah. And I do it a little differently. I know that people are nervous in needles. So I use this, this needle instead. And I promise that my goal is to make you look natural. So book a consult with me today. End of story. Net net is she basically had a consult with somebody without even having to be there. They like get her. She said exactly what she's probably going to say in every appointment over and over again. But the point is, is that she's emotionally connecting with somebody. Now, Botox is a super easy one. You can do a hundred different things with this. Maybe you just want to show people like results. Maybe you want to do a sort of a tutorial or an educational. There's 101 things to do with video. My suggestion is this year, invest in video. And you can do it a lot of different ways. You know, this is just like a super cute one that we did. And I thought I would be able to um, show you, but this is something we put on a homepage just to, um, show a little movement and something new. This is the owner of the spa and, or the medical spa and she is a service junkie and every, she jokes every day that she's always doing different services. So we took pictures in it and video of her actually getting all of these services essentially done. Um, but the point is, is she's in it. She's showing her personality. She's showing a little video. She, at the end of this video, she does a smile and a wink. You get to know that she's laughing about all of these services. You're, she's emotionally connecting with her potential audience or clients. Okay, so I keep saying the word connection and emotional connection, and I'm just going to keep going. But people, so this is a great quote from Maya Angelou. People won't remember what you said, but they will remember how you made them feel. And this is literally everything that we do as business owners in this field. We are constantly trying to make our patients and our clients feel better leave feeling happier and better. Um, yeah, and so let me just show you some examples. The goal basically is to build your know, like, trust factor before you meet them in person. 
and so you're basically trying to show it's a sort of an intangible way that you can connect with them so here again is dr ellen marmer's um videos excuse me homepage. these are sort of women that and men that just sort of float slowly and ethereally across the screen and underneath it is the service that they had and just a little one sentence almost like a mini testimonial it moves super slow they're all naked for some reason the color palette's all the same and it basically just feels really like like any it could be any of you it's like this guy's saying, you know, I had Althera and I feel great, you know, and she's saying my acne's gone and now I feel confident. It's just a silly little thing, but it, it it's this video imagery. It's it's building a connection. People can see themselves in these patients. And this is a great way to really connect. Um, this is, we call these basically client stories. And so Showing happy clients or post clients is super important. And we've done this forever. We used to do like a testimonial and it'd say, you know, I love Dr. So-and-so from Judy, marketing executive or something like that. But meanwhile, those are always, they read fake and, and they are fake because half the time I used to write them. Um, or then we moved over to uh, like before and after photos, which are very important. Don't get me wrong, but they never, like look good like their before pictures always I mean 99.9% .9 of the time are not cute and then the after picture even though you can see that the visible difference and whatever the change is, the picture is still not cute and your website looks insane so our our recommendation is to create more of a story page or a client page where you're showing the before you're showing an after, and then you're showing an after after, and then you're telling the client's story. So like this is Steve Diane from Chicago on the left. He's just a genius. And he does a beautiful job where he talks about what he did at the top, and then he, he takes a before and after photo, and then he takes an after after photo where he dresses her up and makes her look great. And then he lets her tell her story, not just through video, but also through copy. And she's saying, you know, I. I went through menopause and I gained all this weight and I felt terrible about myself. And then I got a divorce and I felt horrible and I said, I'm going to do something. And I went to see Dr. Diane and my life has changed and I feel amazing and life is new and I'm having a fresh start. And people read this and they're like, oh yeah, I need a fresh start. I want this too. So when people are digging through and trying to get to know you and see whether they want to come to you, they want to not just see a brown mark that's there and then missing. They want to actually feel a connection between somebody who's like them, who left and feels amazing after leaving you. Um, this yeah. This is a, a quick time check, Alexis. Too, we're down yeah. to about five more minutes. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I know we've got. I know you've got more slides, and we're probably going to have time to hit. So, um, I'll encourage you maybe look for those. Uh, take that that deep dig and look for those highlights that we're going to. Yeah, look for I'm moving fast. Back. Okay, I'll hustle. Sorry about that, guys. I went off on a couple tangents okay the next thing you want to do is you want to show that you care you want to show that you care about your clients your craft your staff and your community and there's a lot of different ways you can do this take pictures of a training day and and with your staff in it this shows your clients that you care enough about the business that you care about your girls about your clients you want to train them and offer the best service show them about the team and the back behind the scenes of the team this makes you look like you care about your staff you highlight birthdays. People care, the, the clients and patients care about, care about your staff and it looks good for you to care about them as well. These adorable faces on this selfie got maybe like 350 likes on, on uh, Instagram. Here's how you share about your, show you share about, you know, your craft and your community. This is Dr. Ellen Marmer. She's kind of a unicorn. She climbed um, Mount Kilimanjaro, but people were with her along her journey. So they, she posted about it on social media. She, People came in, were excited about it, to hear about her training, and, and they wanted to see her hit her results. And then she gave back, she, she gave back to the cancer research, it was a group of them. Here are different ways that you can have events and always make sure that it gives back to the community and make sure it's small, it works with a local, local charity of some sort, give to the local charities. Um, and the last thing I'm gonna say is consistency. If you're persistent, you'll get it. If you're consistent, you'll keep it. And the consistency is on two levels. The first one is that you've got to be um, consistent with your message on all of your platforms. And the second thing is you've got to be consistent with your delivery. You can't just send something out one week and then, you know, three months later, send something else out.
so let me let me pause you there because th this is I think an important question. On the consistency front, a challenge that we see is you know most um, practices are they're effectively we're small businesses, um, and very often there's members of the team who are contributing on social media. Someone's doing a, a you know a, an ad. Someone's uh, doing an emailer. What's the best advice you have to help practices who are striving for more consistent brand expression to get everybody on the same page um, if they're trying to do some of this on their own? Yeah, so I have a couple, so two things. First of all, whenever you work with your first logo designer or your brander or your developer, you should always have them create something called a brand book and request a brand book. This is color palette, fonts, language, and you can, ex social examples of social media posts, you should have them create something called a lookbook. And then that way, at least everybody can reference sort of a lookbook. Like if you're ever going to say this, make sure it's all capitalized. If you're ever going to use this, use these 10 language words to represent you. If you're ever going to do images, use images in this family. So you create something like a brand book or a lookbook that each person has a handle on so they can kind of see the overview and try to at least match it. The second thing I'll say, and not just because obviously we do this, but but a lot of our clients always say, I'm looking for somebody in, in, for my management position who's really strong in marketing. And I always say that's the biggest mistake. Your, your director of your facility, your manager of your facility should be an operations person. They should be really diving deep into the nuggets of the business, creating systems and um, being hands on with the guests. That's where they are most used. If you put them in charge of social media or if you put them in charge of their marketing, that pulls them back into their office and they're sitting at a desk for 20 to 30 hours of the week trying to get this ready and you're losing that operational sort of oversee or management that you needed. Marketing is such an easy thing to outsource that I would, I always tell people, don't try to spend less on your manager and find somebody who's really just operational. Don't try to find somebody that's operational marketing and then outsource the marketing and, and you'll end up probably paying the same about. I don't know if that's what you were looking for, but. No, that's great, thank you. Okay. Um, Let's so these are just. a couple minutes over. This is fantastic material, so, so yeah. keep going for five more minutes for us. So this is just the case studies. I mean, here's Nicole. I mean, we're done, really. This is Nicole's stuff. She's, you've kind of already seen everything, but here's her four-step method, and here's her, her methodology. This is a really layman sort of utilitarian, um, ad but if you could see she uses her own language even in her ads so say goodbye to turkey neck get rid of your gobble like she's that's how she talks here's some of her social media posts super sexy um and then same with truth and beauty we always list you know how i was saying list those uh descriptors um in your lookbook and and then make sure that your web that it everything sort of matches those descriptors and um and yeah this you've kind of already seen a lot of this and and every if you see everything it feels really consistent from her, their social media posts to their copy to their client stories um, to their products, you know the the consistency to me is everything. And now this was the Q and A session, but <laughs> let's but I ran out there for a it. second. We're we're right on time in terms of cleaning the hour. We can take a couple more minutes. Um, and what I'd love to do is uh, for those in the audience, just remind you again on the right hand side of your screen, there's a questions panel. You can expand that to expose. Uh, the Q&A panel. You can type a question in the bottom. Mike, thank you for your, your comment. I will make sure that Alexis knows how much you appreciated her, uh, her ideas today. Um, for everybody else, toss those questions in there and um, we'll, we'll um, get those in front of Alexis and we'll stay just a couple minutes longer as we wrap up going into the next hour. You know, I, I want to um, go back really qu quickly and just ask the question where you, you, you talked to Alexis at the beginning about um, culture and as kind of the idea of how we do things. And I know very often when think, people think about culture as it relates to, to companies, you know, they think in terms of the beliefs and the behaviors of the team and um, more kind of the inside behavior. And you took a really interesting uh, view of this, looking at that, that outside expression of the culture, how, how the customer experiences it. When you're trying, when you're consulting and you're trying to help uh, a company discover its culture, how it, want, how it finds its way and expresses it. Do you have any, uh, any tips on what that process looks like that if, for a business that's trying to find, you know, this is our way and, and we're not going to do it differently? Um, yeah, I mean, that's, I find this is sometimes the hardest part because it, it's like 
at the end of the day, everybody's doing the same services. So we really just, it's, it really is a, a, a mesh of a lot of different things. It's the way we price, sometimes it's the way that we price things. Sometimes, you know, for example, let's say Botox. It, you know, we're in, the, in the past, you know, our goal was that every service, I, I know I'm going to get a lot of questions on this, but I, every service was uh, come in by, priced by consultation. And what I found is that it irritates more people than it appeases them. And so the goal was like, if I can just get them in the door, then I can sell to them and then I'll close the deal indoors. And what I'm finding is I'm losing a lot of people just because they're frustrated. My, yeah. so, so I look at pricing as a way to create a new system. Maybe I do that online. Maybe I make it super easy. Maybe I break Botox into two groups, small parts and large parts. And, and, and I, I figure out how to, make it easy for the consumer to shop. And this is how we do it. So brows or you know, your, so your glabella or your forehead or your crow's feet are all roughly the same. And I'm going to break even at the end anyway. So I'm going to charge the same for those areas. And then different areas, I'm going to tier or something. So I look for ev everything. I look really to, to figure out how is it going to be easiest to, for the consumer to read it, and, and to, to read the website and, and understand me, but also then how can I put my own spin on it? And I'll, I'll just say this, I'm finding that, uh, you know, the most successful wellness and beauty businesses that are out there right now, which I showed, which are like dry bar and, and, and skin laundry, you know, they're really focused on specialization. And so they're really doing a limited menu. And so I, what I try to do also is find your unique angle and then condense your menu to fit into that angle and then group things together. So instead of selling a thousand things, I'm selling five groups. I don't know if that's that makes fantastic. Sense. So, you know, um, it kind of, I think, somewhat related to that. Janelle has a great question for us. So she, you gave an example of a, a, a clinic with a really powerful personality. You gave another where um, it was more about um, an, an image and a brand. Um, Janelle writes that, you know, she's struggling to market in a practice where the doctor's just too shy to really be the face of his own clinic. Um, you know, how do you create that intimate brand, um, you know, when you know, and and get patients excited to get to know him when his outward expression is such a, a shy expression. Yeah, this is like the most common problem. So it's like in, when we start building the brand, they're all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're like, great, take a photo. They're like, oh, no, you know, so getting them to take their own imagery is very, very difficult. So you can still do this through get a good photography shoot, get good language down in quotes. I love putting quotes all over a website. So in each area. So you could say, you know, maybe you say something like you have a page on, I, I just keep going back to Botox and fillers because it's so easy, but then just underneath Botox, put a quote from that doctor. And so you can show his personality that way and do it through photography and then highlight the rest of the staff because it's okay. Really, it's a whole, it's a business. So highlight the girl at the front desk. People know her, you know, I, I try to highlight everybody on in the on the team because every person that comes in has a different connection with that person and uh and you can sort of build up the team too and it ends up enhancing the doctor because the doctor looks more selfless he looks like he loves his team that he supports everybody that he's happy to push services off to them so i do try to also build up the, the team so the team actually is a great um, transition our, our last question that we have time for today um alexis uh, comes from whitney and she asks, you know, so you, you you take the time you define what this culture is. We could probably spend an hour just on this question. So just your top tips yeah. on how do you get staff to buy into that culture? How do you get the team to echo, you know, this, um, this set of behaviors of how we do things? How do you get them to buy in? Yeah, that's pretty hard. Well, I'm a New Yorker and I, like, we are very bossy. So like, you're in or you're out. Like when there are a lot of, I, I'm a little bit tough. So my philosophy on this really is heavy, heavy training. I script everybody. And if you're not in line with the brand, then you, you have to be a brand ambassador. And when I'm speaking to my staff, I speak to them, not like, Hey, this is what we're, what we're doing. I think this is your job role. You are a brand ambassador. You represent this brand and these are your talking points and these are your scripts. And if they can't fall in line, then they're not really the right person for the team because you really do need a team of soldiers to help you um, push and promote and, and send your message. If you've got a team of people that are more self, um, 
promotional, that that's really not the person for your team. It's not that's a great answer. Election. I know. I, I, mean, want to, I want to. No, not not to end on a down note, but I think you're right. Yeah. You've got to have the right people on the bus if you're going to succeed in building a, a winning brand. So, Alexis, I want to thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule, both to put this content together for our audience today and for joining us here live. Um, ideally, uh, there was a little bit of a hiccup at the beginning, but I think we are recording. Uh, assuming that's the case, uh, we will get this recording out to everybody who is registered within about 72 hours uh, because of uh, uh, the time here. It might not be until Wednesday or excuse me, uh, Monday that it goes out. Uh, and otherwise, we've already had that promise from Alexis that we will at the very least be able to share these slides. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for joining us today and wish you all a successful and productive end to your week. Alexis, awesome. thank you again. Thank you. So nice. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone, and have a great afternoon.